Hey friends, it's Marie and the fairies are just off camera. We are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey everybody, you can't see them, but the magical, most magical of magicalists of fairies are here in the house and you're gonna get to see all of them. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today for our tutorial, we are gonna wet felt more flowers. So last week we did the poppies and this week we are doing the ranunculus, ranunculus asiaticus for a matter of fact. And these are really well known for having like many layers of lacy petals. They're super easy to make. They're really fun. And so we're going to make our own handmade felt and show you how to make these flowers. So thank you all so much for being here with us. I see so many of you joining us from around the world. Welcome, whether it's your first time or a hundredth time watching us on Willy Wednesday. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas. And as you can see, we have friends all over the world. And that just makes us pretty wealthy folks and happy folks too. So I want to say hi to, there's Lori Harper is in Missouri. We see Matt Kerr in Canada with the kiddos. This would be a great project with the kiddos because they can make any kind of felt they want, Mac. We see Lisa in North Carolina, Diana in Indiana. So awesome to see you. Michelle Beatty says it's her first show. That rocks. This is going to be fun. Jen Smith is here for her second show. And Claire Brookwell in the UK, you are coming up here in just a second. We brought a show and tell of yours. And I want to say a big, big hi hello to Lisa Porter in Dallas, Texas. Fairy Becca's mom, we know this is your first show. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here, everybody. So, I am Marie, and none of this can I do alone. My beautiful husband is off camera. He's here helping us, and all the magical fairies are here. And they brought some stuff to show you that you might like to think about for these projects today. So first up is the lovely fairy Hannah. Yay! Hey everybody, how are y'all doing? Hope you're having a great day out there. So today I am showing y'all one of our specialty designer packs. These packs are going to come in a variety of different colors and in different themes. This one is going to be our Fire Mountain theme, so you can tell it's got a lot of the hot tones, oranges, um, reds, and yellows. So each of these packs is going to come with five colors of merino top. In this one we have burnt orange, pumpkin, sun, zinnia, and citrus. And the really fun thing about these packs is they're going to be a great way to get your hands on every type of, pretty much every type of luster fiber we have available to shop. So it's going to come with a little bit of hankies, bamboo tops, so you can see some neps in here. It also has a couple of our silk blends. So it's just a really fun way to, to really get a lot of texture all in one pack and a great, great um, pack for any kind of wet felted project, including the flowers we're going to do today. Uh, everyone loves the flowers and the colors and says, hi, Hannah. Hi. Rubbing on <laughs> <the> cow mask. <laughs> it's my favorite one. Debbie <laughs> Carroll says she has that pack and she loves it. Oh, good. Yeah, and... Um, so, Carrie Kirk said, this is the best thing about quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. We're so glad y'all are enjoying it because we, we love it, too. And here's Miss Ann coming on to show y'all something else. Woo, woo, woo. Hi, friends. Thanks for gathering with us today. I have got another one of our specialty designer packs. This one is the Delicious Paradise Island pack. It's got a tropical theme to it. Like Miss Hannah said, you really do get everything in these packs, and they're great for, they're ideal for wet felting, and just great for projects like this. This one right here is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites, too. Mm -hmm. Lots of love. Everyone really likes those. Love the colors. Everyone's saying hi. They love seeing the fairies. Oh, <laughs> we love you, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Next up is Miss Becca. Woohoo! Becca's in the house. Hi guys and mom. <laughs> this is our wet felting flower kit. If you're new to wet felting or haven't wet felted yet, I would um, recommend this. Um, it's the perfect starter kit for any wet felting project. Um, this is just one of our color variations. Inside we've got merino top, a silk blend, some um, embellishments for texture. Um, if you don't have any wet felting tools, I would recommend our thin plastic sheeting as well as our wet felting mesh. 
For more fun flower tutorials, check out our YouTube channel where you can use this kit on any one of them. That's awesome. Thank you, Becca. You bet. Up next is Miss Fairy Holly. <laughs> Hi everyone! Okay, so today, last week, I showed you the Chasing Butterflies and the Dreaming of Summer Merino Top Packs that were are perfect for the flowers. Now, this week, we have the um, Living Green Merino Top Pack, and it comes with, I can count six <laughs> different colors of Merino Top. <laughs> and it's perfect for your wet felting and for making the leaves and embellishments. And heck, I mean, you could make a green flower. There's no rules, right? Totally. So, um... There's, yeah. Look at the pretty colors. <laughs> Stacy Colgan says, I guess this counts as yard work that I should be doing today. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to tell my husband that. <laughs> oh, so, so sweet. now for your entertainment, we have Fairy <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> Ooh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I, I just wanted to give a big shout out to everybody for all your kind words that you've been giving us through Facebook through the order comments, it really brightens our day and it just has really helped us, I know me personally, like get through a lot of the craziness that has been coming around. So I just want to say thank you to everybody and to try to brighten your day. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a sheepdog and a rose? Yes. What do you get when you cross a sheepdog with a rose? A cauliflower. Oh! I know they are so awesome and I saw someone asked was uh, fairy Becca new actually Becca has been here since like Thanksgiving or around Thanksgiving but she usually doesn't work Wednesdays so this is her been her second Lily Wednesday and um, for those of you who are new to us we call our crew the fairies because they are so bright and so full of love and magic these are the gals that answer the phones they answer the emails they answer your technical questions your product recommendation questions and they're the ones who pack your orders. So lots of love coming from those gals and just love in the house for all of you. So thank you for being here so, so much. And I will be watching for your questions to come through and your comments. So this is an interactive session. You're welcome to comment, chime in, ask questions. If we don't answer your question in the live show, please post it down below or after the show, you'll be able to post comments below the video on YouTube. And if you don't get your question answered, we recommend that you post it down there. We do love reading all your comments and thank you for those. So at the end of every show we give away prizes for those who join in the conversation and now we have been giving away prizes to people who leave comments down below. So last week we made um, the poppies, we wet felt at the poppies and um, y'all left comments down below and also people shared theirs in our Facebook group which is called Living Felt Friends so I brought just a couple to show you and literally just a couple so let me run through for you just a few samples of things you are BFFs made from last week and ones that just really brightened our day so check these out these are by oh that's going really fast these are I'm gonna st I'm gonna stop it right here it's, it's blazing through my slideshow here let me start over okay I'm gonna pause this is Claire Brookwell I don't know why it's running so fast Kevin Nobles Stephanie Karenini Karenina in Greece and let me see if I can just click through one at a time sorry it went so fast Aileen O'Malley in the UK Claire Brookwell uh, I mean, Aileen O'Malley's in California. I'm embarrassed now. My show is running too fast. I'm just going to stop this thing and do it myself. I don't know why it's running through. Oh, anyway, they're lovely to look at, aren't they? All of them. So right there is Stephanie Carinia. She's in Greece. These are Kevin Nobles, who was our winner last week, one of our winners. He's right up here in Texas. This one is Claire Brookwell. She's in the UK. And this one is Aileen O'Malley, and I believe that she's in California. So thank you all so much for sharing pictures of the things you felt in our Facebook group, and we hope that you will share them there. You can also tag us on Instagram uh, and share what you have there. So those 
we have two winners from the comments uh, from last week's video, and those are Doris Dever, I hope I'll say it correct, and Leslie Plage Rohrman. And I probably slaughtered your names, but we drew those two names from last week. And what you get to do is pick a Merino Top Studio Pack. This is what we've been wet felting with the last few weeks, is uh, wet felting studio packs. So you get to pick one of those on our website and we'll post a link after so you can um, pick yours out but if you don't know where they are already so awesome alright for today's project we are making the felt ranunculus and I saw that um, some of you said you weren't familiar with this flower so let me see oh I thought I brought a picture but I didn't um, well you can look up the the ranunculus they're really a, a form of um, they're, they're uh, really lacy. They're like a rosy flower, but they're a form of buttercup. And I think they're a Persian, they're a Persian, Peruvian or Persian? Peruvian buttercup, I think. Anyway, they are adorable. They have lots of layers, and so it takes a lot of time. And for anyone who's not familiar, we're making handmade felt. So I want to show you what mine looks like, um, what my handmade felt looks like and um, as compared to regular felt as well. You can grab a download. We have a description, a link in the description of the video. You can grab a download so that you get the supply list and you can also get a basic pattern for cutting up your petals. And I'm gonna take you through the project right now. So I will watch for your comments and questions. So the first thing to know is that we're making these flowers with handmade felt. For those of you who aren't familiar with handmade felt, this might be what you think of when you think of felt. This is commercial felt, we sell it here in the shop, and it's 100% wool felt. What you buy in the craft store can be acrylic, polyester, plastic, or even a blend. This holds up really well to needle felting and we like using it for a lot of projects. Um, but for making a flower, if you make flowers out of felt, sometimes they look just a little dull, a little bit lifeless. So we have made, uh, the fabric that I'm making using today is made using coral and some bling fibers. So I'm going to take you through those. One of my uh, things is chiming. I'm going to see if I can turn that down. Okay, this is the handmade felt that I made to work with you all today. So you can see there's quite a difference between the two fabrics. And if you learn to make your own handmade felt, you can just get the most amazing results of things that you might otherwise use commercial felt for. So we're going to look at those together. And I'd love for people in the comments, maybe some of our veterans or people who um, felted with us last week, is just to leave comments and maybe let people know that you felted the poppy because so many of you did. So many of you made the poppy and they are just amazing flowers. And I'm going to read some of your input right now. Um, Nicole says, people are very talented. Oh, y'all liked those flowers. Yeah, I, I love them too. I, I want to tell you that last week, I'm sure I said, you know, I'm not going to be surprised to see that some of you's flowers, your flowers are just way <laughs> prettier than mine. And that is so true. And Kevin Nobles in his, he used sari silk waste. And I brought that to use in mine last week and didn't. So nice touch, Kevin. Well played. Um, so Karen says that she likes the ranunculus. Uh, it's one of her favorite, but they don't grow for her, so felting is the way to go. And um, Kathy Fald says she's never seen them before. Yeah, they're really pretty flowers. So let's look at what we have today. I'm going to turn down just for a second and show you the fabric that I made. And then what I'm going to do is take you through a blazing fast version of how to wet felt the fabric. So let me show it to you first and then I'll uh, tell you folks where to check that out. Okay, so here is my fabric and I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see it. And what you see here is merino top in coral. This is the color that I used. And then I've covered this top with bamboo. 
And this bamboo is dyed in a variegated colorway. I didn't use really any of the yellow. I just used the orangey bits and the pinky bits. And in the video I'm going to run you through, you will see how I laid this down and how it's different than the fabric that we felted last week for our poppies. Um, but bamboo is um, a wonderful fiber for adding luster and sheen to your work and um, just got to get some to play with. So you'll see in our, on our website under luster fibers that we sell currently Tussa silk, um, bamboo top, and viscose. Try all of those for your luster fibers because they add just a really nice sheen. So now this felt sheet was made I laid it out, it was just a very thin piece, and I also brought for you the weight and the dimensions so you can see how it's done. So permit me to walk you through quickly the wet felting portion, and it's going to go very fast. So before I do that, let me tell you, if you're brand, brand new and you've never wet felted before, on our website, under the wet felting videos, find the what we call it's like an introduction to wet felting we refer to it as the pancake lesson so if you go to that section of videos and search pancake or um, fairy ann is going to post a link uh, in the chat box if you're watching live over to the side it'll be in the description if you're watching after the live show so you can just see the pancake lesson but this layout is a little bit different and it's called the herringbone. And someone remind me if we ever did the herringbone on a video. I'm really not sure if we ever did. Um, so let me find this video. Here we go. I'm going to talk you through it. And um, here it is. Okay, so the first thing you'll see is I'm putting some resist underneath my bubble wrap. This is standard bubble. That resist is there. This is my hot tip. If you want to control your size without measuring it out, um, you can just put something, especially that can handle the water, underneath your bubble wrap and use that as a guide. Then you can just take it out when you start felting, um, whenever you start rolling. So I'm going to do a herringbone layout. This measurement is 15 by 15. Um, is the size there of the resist or the pattern and I am going to use ultimately I'll end up using six tenths of an ounce it's around 21 grams um, for this project but notice that I'm trimming the sides when you see the herringbone layout in a minute you'll understand if I trim all the edges this is going to allow me to control the square so I'm only going to take about five minutes to run you through the wet felting portion so it will speed up here in just a moment. So what I did was I took my merino top, this is 19 micron merino top, I separated it down into quarter ounce increments. I, so I split the, it in half so I had one ounce and then I split that, the width of that so that I had quarter ounce increments. I'm trimming all the edges. This is going to give me a nice square to fill in and will keep my shape just a little more controlled. This, this layout can be a little bit wonky when you're laying out flat. Um, and in this case, I found that my layout was a little bit sloppy, admittedly, because um, I guess I have a hard time seeing when I'm felting on camera versus <laughs> just felting in my studio. Okay. I am just going to finish this layout and I see some good questions coming in. Um, Sharon Waddell asked, and here's goes, here goes the herringbone layout. So now I'm going to lay out a diagonal layer. It's about 45 degrees. And then I row, I'll make a diagonal row. And then the next row is going to overlap that about 50% going the opposite direction. You can... Um, lay down the uh, you'll notice five sorry you you can lay down one diagonal and then the cross one diagonal and then the cross or you can do it like this make an entire row in one direction and the next row in another direction so let me answer a few questions while um, that gets laid out and then we're going to speed it up here in a minute 
Um, Patty Boy reminds me, thank you very much, Patty, that the herringbone was in the cowl. So we have a cowl um, neck warmer, head warmer video on YouTube that was another Wooly Wednesday. A ton of people did that project, and we did a herringbone um, layout for that. A herringbone allows you to get like almost a single layer layout. So last week our felt was a little bit thicker for the poppies. I wanted the um, petals to have a little more beef and after making a few of these ranunculus flowers with fiber or felt in the same thickness I decided I really wanted it thinner. So shoot for this measurement a 15 by 15 layout and 0.5 to 0.6 tenths of an ounce. Okay, here we go. So we're going to blaze through this felting and now is a great time to get your questions answered. We'll finish uh, this layout, fill in any bare spots that you see, just go whatever is the opposite direction, and now notice the way I'm laying down the bling fibers. Last week I laid them down going vertical. It was very intentional because I wanted the lines to run up and down the petals. This time I wanted the bling just to be on the surface and not have any specific direction to it. And that's why I laid it out all crazy like that. So as usual I am wetting and soaping up my project and I'm going to wet felt by hand to form my surface skin first. Um, if you're new to working with mesh, make sure to peel it back from time to time and make sure nothing is pilling or sticking to your mesh. If it's sticking, you're rubbing too hard. Just go more gentle. And then after that, I'm using the plastic and then I'll begin rolling. So, uh, about the herringbone. Lori says the herringbone is the one that stretches. True that. Herringbone gives you a little more stretch. I didn't really care about the stretch here. What I wanted was a paper thin layout without using any fabric. I just wanted as thin of a layout as I could get. So that's my, my speed felting you see there now. Like literally that is all of it um, whittled down <laughs> to a very quick time. Okay, so my end result from the 15 by 15 ended up being um, 10 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches and I just go on average because I didn't try and control the shrinkage to a great degree and you can see it's sort of here and then there um, but about 10 and a half by 11 and a half so on one side it shrunk almost 25 percent and on the other side 30 percent um, about and really I just wanted a nice fabric that I could cut and I wanted it to be very thin so yeah it does have you know it does have a little bit of stretch to it and we like to use this layout also for wearables especially like around the hips or something like that a herringbone stretch a herringbone layout is really nice so those are a few examples and um, Kathy asked can I compare this to a pre-felt the one we made this isn't a pre-felt it's a felt and even last week was a felt but I would say it was just a bit soft felted and this is this is nicely felted um, this is nicely felted how long did that take peg maybe an hour you know from start to finish because I felted two pieces I felted a big piece and then this little piece this little piece is actually smaller than the measurements I gave you so I made a small piece so I had something to show you and then I made the big piece so after you make your big piece uh, start with the 15 by 15 and shrink it down then you're going to use your PDF and I've given you how to cut out the petals. So these are the sizes of the petals and notice that I give you these up and down lines here. That shows if you do have a grain, a visible grain in your fabric, your felt fabric, then that's the direction to have the grain running when you make the cut. So download this after the show and you'll know everything as far as how we get to where I am right now. Okay, so I will continue to watch for your questions. They're always, uh, they're always, always helpful. And I see the question of um, how does the herringbone design look dry? How is it different from straight up and down layouts? So one more time, here's how it looks dry from the back. You're not going to be able to tell. You can't tell that it's a herringbone. Um, the difference is it's easier to get a single layer layout with the herringbone than crossing because crossing one layer goes like this 
one entire layer, and then the other layer goes like this. So now you have two definitive layers. A herringbone allows you to go like this and then cover about 50%, and those fibers will migrate together that way. So give it a go, you know, just give it a try. Um, again, on the head warmer, the reason I used it was I wanted a really thin layout. My goal was thin. Okay, y'all, so here we go. What you're going to do is download the PDF, and after you download the PDF, you're going to cut out these little circles. You can see that the um, direction of any grains in my petals, in my fabric, is not visible, not noticeable. That's cool. So then you can lay these however. I had very little waste and use these areas here uh, even where the bling doesn't show because all of these petals get layered on top of each other and you're not going to see a lot of that bling anyway. So what you're going to do is cut these out and I just pin them on like any pattern. You can tell by all of the holes in this how many times I've pinned it. You're just going to pin it and cut them out. And it takes a little time so plan to do this um, Plan to do this, uh, you know, plan for the cutting of the petals to take a little time. It's at least going to take as long as it did for you to felt them. Now some of you, um, you know, you may go about this in a different way. Go about it whatever way works for you. Um, but this is all I did, was go around and cut all of my little petals out. And I'm going to give you the number or the basic idea right now. And I'm going to show that to you. So what you're going to end up is a bunch of these little guys. And again, don't worry if some have bling and some don't because you can use these strategically. You are going to cut out a ton of these, just a ton. So let me show you what that looks like. And I'll keep answering your questions. They're all really good. Okay, these are our petals. So I'm recommending of the smallest size, you want to cut 10 or 12 at least. Of the middle size, you want to cut out 12. And you may have some left, even from flower to flower. And then of the bigger ones, I would say cut at least 12, 12 or more. I see some of you asking, could you make them just by needle felting and not wet felting at all? And I'll tell you, they're going to not be as thin and as delicate as wet felting. Wet felting is going to give you a different level of fabric that you're just not going to get with needle felting. You're just not. And so that's why we wet felt some things. It's just the quality of fabric that you're going to get. Can you use more than one color? Sure. Uh, uh, John and Teresa, give it a go. Um, can you alternate the fibers? So same question. Um, will it be a noticeable stripe? They're going to migrate together. You're going to see some variants. So make yourself a test piece, y'all. Remember, make a small test piece and see how do you like the effect. Um, it, and then Michelle asks, if she decides to use our MC1 batting, does she need to use a herringbone layout? And the answer is no. If you wet felt MC1 batting, you can just lay it out just as it is um, and felt it just like that. Okay. What we need to do is we're going to build our flower off of our stem. So you're going to use your same cloth covered 18 gauge wire. You're going, this is just like we did last week, you're going to bend a little hooky do in your wire. And you're going to magically find some wool, which I somehow didn't bring in. <laughs> can't believe that. You're going to wrap it around. We did this on last week's show on the poppy, so y'all check out the poppy video. You're going to wrap it around and we're going to build a little ball head here. I'm probably going to need to grab my fiber. Um, we're going to build a little ball head here and we want it to be about an inch. So I'm probably going to grab just a little more fiber. Um, Sharon Waddell says, my husband has a round hole punch that is made to go through plastic. I wonder if that would work. Yes, you know, we have a, um, let me just go, so, so we have a die cut machine that we can cut one inch circles on, so you can use that, but I will have you notice that on the medium size and the large size petals, I made ovals and ovals will just go a little bit farther as you wrap around. It's going to give you a little more overlap um, as you build your flower up. So I made ovals on that. Okay, so on the, um, 
on the stem, what we're going to do is build this little, um, the little center of the flower here, and you want it to be about an inch. So I'm going to, I need to grab something. I'm missing, um, y'all look at my pretty petals for one second. Talks amongst yourselves. I'm going to show you some other bling fibers and I'm going to be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just needed to grab this. So for those of you who don't know, this is our MC1 batting. Some people are asking about it. Um, and this is a different, it's a different breed of fiber. It's a different micron and we process it into a batting. And this is a real thin layer of the batting. So what we do with our little hooky do here is we're going to wrap this fiber around the hook and I'm not gonna painstakingly go through it all. But we wrap this fiber around the hook and then we're going to needle felt it until we build up to a, almost a one inch ball. So I'm going to work on this one that I already started. And again, we did that on camera last week when we needle felted the poppies, which is a super fun project to do. And I'm going to read a few more of your questions. And thank you for those, by the way. So right now, just use a medium or fine needle and you want to build this up here so that you have a nice base. We're going to needle felt all of our petals to this ball. Now last week we wet felted our petals and this week I have done both, um, but only on my thicker only on my thicker fabrics and I really found that I think it's not necessary for this particular flower. I did think it might be interesting to kind of wet and partially shape the flower after it's built if you wet felt just the tips but you'd have to be willing to risk that. <laughs> I would do it but you'd have to be willing to risk it. Okay. I am going to read just a few more of your comments and thank you all so much for being here. Um, Somebody says, I can't respond to comments, but we see you, Carol. I don't know why you can't respond, but we see you. Um, okay, good. All right, so I'm going to wrap just a little bit more. I want this to build up. Now, don't make this too big, even if you think it needs to be big, because what's going to happen is as you add your petals, you are going to be building bulk on this part of your flower. So don't, um, don't make it too large because we're needle felting the petals on and all the petals are fully formed. You don't need them. You don't need this to be too large. It's very interesting how it builds up over time. Okay, this needle's too coarse. I can't see what size I have. All right, I'm gonna keep reading your questions. Carrie says, I make it hard to ask questions. <laughs> Probably, Carrie, you can see because I never stop talking. <laughs> um, okay. You guys are starving? Are y'all all talking about food? Can we order in <laughs> for you? <laughs> can I send the lunch wagon to you? Oh, funny. Looks like pepperoni and veggies. Oh my God, that's funny. Okay, so we're just gonna build up the density on this little guy. And you do want it to be somewhat finished, um, somewhat firm so that as you add your petals, it doesn't keep shrinking away. But here we go. Now, I've done these two different ways. So just for a second, we're gonna do a close up on the two flowers I already built and I'm gonna tell you the difference between them. Um, and for those of you who've never felt it with me before, hear me say for the first time that, you know, we don't have really hard, fast rules here. We want you to kind of find your way and you may do something different. You may do something three, four different times and change it each time. That's totally fine. So let me show you these. Now, this is the first one I made and I'm going to hold it right up here so you can see it and hopefully the camera will focus and not be too hard. And then I'm going to, we'll do it here too. Okay. So. This flower is the first one I made, and I want you to focus in just on this very center here. I started my first row of the smallest petals actually as the second one, and I left the opening green. 
later I went back and I filled in, let's see if I can get straight on the camera, I filled in that very, very center with just slight little sliver cuts. And I liked that. I liked being able to control that and not having too much, let's see, I can get it straight, too much bulk down there. Now this one, the purple, this one's purple and pink. That very inner row there, let's see, that very inner row are full circles. And I actually liked it a little bit less. So I'm going to start this one, and the one that we start now, and I'm going to leave about a fingertip open. And um, then I'll try and tell you how you can go back and fill that out. So we're just going to do our best to see all of this since it's a very, I'm going to be zooming in, um, hopefully, so that you can get a better view of building this out. And I'll see if I can park one right here off to the side so you can kind of see it. All right. If you all are ready, say, I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. Now, we're going to take our smallest petals, and I am going to... Uh, leave a little space right there so that we can fill it in later if we want to. Um, Sharon Waddell asks, can you spray the flowers with anything to stiffen them up? Sure, Sharon, spray them after if you want. Um, spray them, but notice, know that anything you apply to this flower is going to change the hand. So rather than make your whole flower an experiment, Make a few of these and experiment and see how does it look different and do you still like it. So remember, experiment small. Don't ruin a whole big flower. Okay, so notice I'm just leaving a little bit of an opening here and we're going to needle felt this down. Now this takes time, I want to tell y'all. So what you're going to do is just start it where you think and if you're not happy, scoot it up before you go too far. So we're going to needle felt this down and I want you to leave this side right here open. Leave the left side open. The first petal and the last petal overlap. Now don't worry about tacking these down um, too hard, but you do want to tack them down in all the areas because honestly you're going to be needle felting through this same petal over and over and over. And you're going to be layering it. So you're going to take your next one, and I like to put them about halfway over the one prior. Now this is going to get repetitive real fast, so hopefully y'all will um, ask some questions, and I will do my best. I'm going to show you a way to kind of speed it up as well, um, but we want to get the first layer on. Now the first layer, and uh, this is a good project for your, your multi-tool, especially once it gets bigger, um, but what you want to do is go ahead and tack down these little top bits. Tack those down. If your wire is driving you bonkers, just, just fold it up and you can uh, make it go where you want it to go. Experiment with your different needles. See which ones you like. Um, really what you want is all this stuff to lay down. Uh, Misty Bear, what are the dimensions of these when they're finished? I don't know. That big? That, that big? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I haven't measured it. You can add as many layers as you want. That's the really fun part. What size needle am I using? Right on my table, I have like a 38 triangle, a 40 triangle, and 42 triangles. Uh, I probably, I'm not going to use anything probably more aggressive than maybe a 38 triangle. We're going to work our way around, and this, you remember, you're doing a 50% overlap, petal on petal, 50% overlap, and try and line up those tops so that they're the same height. Uh, Jennifer McMullen asked, do I have bling on one side or both? Jennifer, I just put it on one because it's going to, yeah, you can put it on both, but I just put it on one. I don't mind having bling just on one side, but if you put it on both, then you will be able to see it on the inner layers, and that'd be pretty too. Um, do they get heavy when you put them in the vase? Top heavy, well, use a tall vase. I think just like any flower, just use a tall vase. So, yeah, they're going to they're gonna want to lean towards the outside of the vase like any tall flower does. So get a tall, a taller vase with a narrow mouth will be your friend if you're just displaying a few flowers and not a bunch of, um, let's see if I can get a little closer for y'all. I'm sorry if that's, if it's not easy to see. 
Um, and as you start to lose the definition, you know, I, I can see that's really hot on the camera. I didn't really think about that when I chose this color. I just really wanted to use the coral. Don't worry about it if you think your petals look a little rough, because in most cases for the petals, you're going to see very little of the petal overall. You're just going to be seeing the very tip. So on the very first uh, one I made, which was this pink one, it was a thicker felt, the same as the felt that I made with you last week, or I shared with you last week. And um, it was thicker. I went through after and I wet felted the top edges of all the petals. I set them like in a cup shape thing overnight. Um, and yeah, that was a whole bunch of work for I feel like not enough of a reward to repeat. So I'm not suggesting it, but you could play with that if you want. Um, you could play with doing that. Um, oh, Anne says these, these make her think of peonies too. And you know, we did, a, we did a peony tutorial a couple of years ago, and I think that that's still on YouTube also, but we didn't add a stem to that. And so we didn't add a stem to that particular peony. We did stems on these trumpet flowers, and they were 100% wet felted. So you could use this same stem stem methodology for the peonies that we shared online and that was like a wrapped flower so the difference was we made a long piece of fabric and we sort of cut the shapes into them and then wrapped it maybe like you would a paper flower or a fabric flower but in this case you have a lot more control when you lay down the individual petals Okay, so when you get to this part, I'm always deceived, like I think this is going to be the overlap of the two, but it isn't. You're like almost to the overlap. So lay this one down, again at the halfway point, and it's really slow, so don't plan to crank out, you know, 10 of these in a day, at least not with this method. Um, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a way to speed this up a little bit, but I feel like... Um, uh, just consider it. Maybe it'll just help you eyeball what you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to save these half ones, and here's the last one. So here's what to notice. This is the first one we started with, and this is going to be the last one, I think, in this row. So it goes halfway over the top, just like we've done, but then it's going to go just underneath this one. And now you may, it may not be perfect every time and you might squeeze an extra petal in on a row. I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I think nature is more perfect than we can be with all this planning. So <laughs> the, fl the flowers you see in nature might just look perfect, perfect. And these, I think, are, we're just kind of going for the vibe. Just going for the vibe. And remember that you can stretch these a little bit. You can pull them, which is the point of the oval as we get to the larger layers. Okay, so now we're going to have our very first layer on right there, and I'm going to needle felt these little tops down. On the coral material, what was the color of the bamboo? The bamboo that I used, this is it right here, and it's called citrus. We call it citrus. It's a variegated, here it is right here. It's going to be different every time. So because it's dyed in a long, in a long strand, it's going to be a little different every time. So whenever you get the variegated bits, they're, you know, they're done by hand. They're not done by a machine. So it'll be a little bit different every time. And we pre-package them in those small packs. Okay, so I'm just going to tack all of this down. And don't worry that this center right here maybe doesn't look perfectly, if it doesn't look perfectly round, because you can fill in with little cuts later. But also, if you feel like, oh, this one's too low and this one's high, then just tug on it a little bit before you add the next row and get it right where you want it. You can just do little bits of adjustments and kind of get that center just how you want it. Doris says she made the um, fabric for the poppies last week but didn't make it thick enough. Can I go back and add additional merino or have I made a great learning sample? Doris, that's a really great question. So if you, if you feel it's really not thick enough, um, I would ask, is it 100% felted? Because if you can felt it more, then it will um, thicken as you condense it down. 
um, and maybe you could use it on this project. But you, if it's really felted, no, you can't add any more merino. So you might think, I think these uh, actually, even the poppies, they could have thinner layers. And um, once you wet felt it and crunch it up like we did, it's going to give them a lot of body. So you might just take it all the way to the end. But if you can see through it, then it's probably too thin. And you might just use it in another project. Okay, so there we go. We have our first layer on. Woohoo! I know it takes forever. But I think it's really worth it in the end. And these would be long, long lasting keepsakes. So here we go. We're going to take our very first one. And it doesn't matter which, but I'm going to start with a nice blingy one. And you just want to put its center, its center in between two other petals. So there's two petals overlap right here. I want this center here. Now I found that I really liked how this looked when I backed it off a little bit. That's almost a quarter of an inch before I start the next layer. It made it look just a little more, I don't know, lacy and realistic rather than having them all the same height or having it higher than the others. So give that a go. And don't be afraid to almost tack down that top because you can come back and pull it loose later and get it to where you want it. Pull it around. Now these I found sometimes I did, oh, let me count those petals I laid down unless somebody else already counted. Um, I found that I did, you know, usually five or six on this second row. And here, now, we're going to start building up the bottom of the flower. So each petal that you add on is going to start building up to the girth and the overall size of this flower. So it's going to get larger than the bulb, you know, that you initially started with. And so you want to get that laying down. Now, one thing you can do it kind of speeds things up and I find it it's a little bit sloppy but um, you can play with the idea and that is creating for yourself a little string of them like this as you build and getting them built up and tack them down so those are all about the halfway and you can see that they're all about the same height so then go through and put these together and maybe just do a couple at a time um, because it gets tricky when you get down to the underneath side it gets a little tricky having all these uh, chained together at least on the big ones on the bigger petals all the way out so we're gonna go over no surprise it's COVID hours we've been going over We've been going over on our Wooly Wednesdays during COVID-19. I hope that's okay. And I wish I could make this go faster live, but I can't without pre-recording every bit of it. <laughs> that's a challenge for me and my schedule, but here we go. So I've got four chained together. And remember, we're just gonna go about to the halfway point. And then I don't know how, you know, how much faster it is, but it does start to give you an idea of that buildup. So you still have to work your way though petal by petal around your flower and work your way down. Okay. Um, reading some of your questions and thank you all so much. Um, Judy Cobias says um, she has everything made for the poppy and she's ready to put it all together. Um, but are there directions for adding the leaves? So I brought, uh, I brought the leaves uh, today, that, and that was the goal, so hopefully we can do that. Now here you don't want to go too fast, so remember we're, we're building around. That's why I'm not a super big fan of the chain. Um, I'm not a super big fan of it, but it does kind of start to give you an idea where everything is going to go. It doesn't speed it up all that much because you're building the whole shape of the flower as you um, add each petal. So, you know, for what it's worth, it's just an idea of how it might speed things up. Now the other thing is, you know, you might decide to do your inner layers as, you know, cutting your fabric to this sort of shape. Um, it's really up to you. I just found that it looked more lacy and delicate if I made each individual petal. Um, to somebody asked, do Lee Davies, do I have any tutorials for vegetables? No, I do not. I've never felted a vegetable. <laughs> I 
I've actually never felt it a vegetable. Sorry, I don't. Um, Y'all are asking, can you use the other bling fibers? Yes, you can. Use the other bling fibers. Play with them. We always encourage you to play with them and see what you like. You know, some people like different ones for different things. So just play with them. They're inexpensive. We package them in little small increments so that you can, um, you know, just taste a little bit and add to your collection and give them a little try. Um, can you use art felt paper to make the felt sheets for this? I have arthritis and can't roll for wet felting. You know, you, you can, you, you definitely can. You can tack it down and toss it in the dryer, or you can also just tack it in the dryer, or you can just felt by rubbing. If you don't want to roll, you can felt by rubbing. So you can make your felt fabric any way that works for you. Okay, so look here is where we are is this is my last one and this is my first one, but this isn't my last one because they don't quite meet. So you're going to want to insert one more in between there. Now each flower may be a little different and that's why I've had you cut, uh, cut I think what would be a little bit extra for each one, um, each size that is. So um, don't be shy on that and cut more than you think you need. <laughs> Hi Dawn, my dear friend. Thank you for saying hello. Um, let's see, is the second row small or medium size? So I just did one row of the small and then the medium size is my second, is my second row. I just did one row of the small. Um, Oh, let's see. Am I already all the way around? Did I already overlap myself? Oh, here I go. Sorry, I'm getting confused. All right, I'm going to peel this one up. Peel up the first one that you put down. Peel up the first one so that you can snake the last one underneath there. So this is not the last one, but it's easiest if you peel that up first. I was burying it under there. And... Okay, so there we go. You want it to still overlap about 50% or else your flower does kind of start to get a little lopsided. And you don't have to start on the same side of the flower every time either. You can change that up and um, you don't have to have the same starting point all the time. Um, Sherry Tamburo says if we want a thicker stem, should we wait until the flower's in place? Um, I would say I'm waiting just so I can put green underneath the bottom of the flower and then wrap my stem. Um, and if you're doing leaves, you may want to do a partial stem and then add your leaves or do no stem. You know, don't cover your stem yet and then add your leaves just so that you can uh, pose the leaf wire because I'm going to put my leaf on a wire. And hopefully we'll have time for that at the end. Okay, so now we just have our second row done, and it's just looking a little bit lacy. Now's a good time. You can, t remember, you can tug things and needle felt them um, just a little bit here into place, and let this flower, you know, just kind of take you on a journey. Find your way row by row, but you can take up the gap. You know, you can have it loose, or you can have it tight. The ranunculus flowers, and I did mean to bring you a picture, but some of them, they have so many layers. They're just amazing. And some of them are really tight and some of them are more loose. So just have fun with yours. And I see that mine's way off center, which is kind of like me. I'll just straighten my stem. Okay, so we're going to make actually one more row in this size before we get to our large ones. But I think you can see where we're going with this and how this works out. So it doesn't take a lot of skill to go from the start to this guy right here. Just keep building your layers and what you see is that the bottom gets more and more flat. So I'm going to work on this row and answer a few more questions before we jump to the leaves. But again, I like to um, here notice I like to scoot, whoops I'm off camera, I like to scoot each of the layers down just a little bit so that you can see the one above it. That's a really nice effect is to see the one that was just above it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to start over here with this one and I'm going to go right about here.
it takes time, but it's a meditative project, and I swear, anyone that you give these handmade flowers to, especially if you put the bling on there, they're just going to be amazed at what you've given them because it's not going to be like any paper or felt flower that they've ever received. It's going to last so much longer than any store-bought flower that you give them, which we all love cut flowers. Everybody loves getting a cut flower, but these will just last so long. So how many flowers could you make from a designer pack? I don't know. Uh, it really depends, but um, just remember, each one of these is about... Um, I weighed it, I made these point six. I have the dimensions written down somewhere, I thought I brought them with me, but I have um, each flower, I weighed the petals from each flower, so I'll see if I can put my hands on that before we, before we sign off, and if not, I'll share it in the group. Um, but I made a big sheet with a half an ounce, basically, and you'll get more than one flower of these from a half an ounce. You'll get more than one. So I think that you can get three from an ounce. I think you can get three flowers from an ounce, including the waste. The waste that was left um, from my cuts on this one is much less. So all of these petals that I've shown you, and I'll pull those out for a second. The waste is much less on these because there's no direction. Um, and that looks bigger than it is, but from all these petals that I showed you in here, this is the entire waste, which is about two grams. So there's, you can get the petals in all, in all directions when there's no real grain. Okay, so y'all get the idea here. You're just going to build up your layers, petal by petal. I think the effect is prettier when you don't snake it across because again it's you want to control all this bulk down here and you want to control the placement of each petal and um, this one I'm going to keep working on and that's the only real secret is just to keep building up each layer remember to overlap them about 50% alternate from the swoop, your middles should basically cross a swoop from the previous row and you want to tuck the last one in a row underneath the first one. Those are the only real rules. If you make it thin enough, I really don't think that wet felting it is going to change the visual all that much to make it worth the work. But I think you can see we're already starting to get some really pretty layers here. And wherever you want, just give it a little tug and then needle felt it into place. And you're going to start to form these beautiful little, they're like little rosettes. They're a species of buttercup, um, but they're just gorgeous. So let me give you a quick tip on the middle. Um, and the reason I didn't start this flower right in the middle was just because of the bulk. Um, the bulk it creates, I, I can't explain it, but I liked it better when I didn't do that. If you do want it filled in with more layers, what you can do is take a single disc, first just cut that tip off, and I'm cutting a little less than half, and then you can find where you want to place it, you're going to place it to fill it in here, and then you can just cut off the tips. Just kind of cut those off, cut off the very ends, just a pinch, and then what you're going to do is tuck it underneath and this is going to allow you to control the center with maybe just three or four petals and not adding a whole bunch of bulk. So just tuck it in there. Three or four, just lift all these up you know, I like, some of them are so pretty, they have, you'll, you'll look them up after this if you've never seen them before, ranunculus, sounds like something from Harry Potter, ranunculus, um, some of them have a different colored center, like kind of green in the center, or creamy white to pink, they're so pretty, and you can make these in many colors, so that's how you're going to build the center, is just snip off um, if you want, if you want to fill it in, just snip off a little less than a third, I mean a little less than a half, so 
like that, snip off the ends, and then tuck it in and build that center. And now we'll look at an idea for the leaves. Um, everyone wants to know what can you do with the leftovers. You know, you can use those leftovers inside of a stuffing project. Maybe you're making something else and you want to stuff something inside of there. Um, you can fill a little mesh bag uh, with lavender and the wool and use them as a little drawer sachet. Um, you can wad them up and use them in the core of a needle felting project if you want and just get them all embedded in there and just fully reuse them. So lots of things you can do with that little bit of waste. Um, how old were you when you started felting? Oh Lord Sue, you're asking me my age. Um, okay, I was uh, 30. <laughs> I think I was 30. 30 or, oh then that would be, let's see now, is that true? Okay, not 30. I think I was 32. I think it's been 20 years now. So I'm gonna guess I was 32 when I started felting. So now you know. <laughs> Um, can I make it even thinner felt? How many more rows uh, without making it a huge flower? You know, I'll tell you honestly, Grow, I have not pushed this project to its limits to be able to tell you. Experiment a little bit. You could make it thinner even probably if you used um, a silk a fabric if you want, but then sometimes it shows in your cuts and that's not so fun. So you're just going to have to experiment and play with your own felting skill and your own techniques. You want something that's thick enough that you can still needle felt it. Sometimes things are so thin that they're almost they're almost too delicate, if you know what I mean. They're too sparse to really grab onto. So I'm going to say this is a great project to begin to cut your teeth on if you're new and just experiment and practice with that thickness of wet felting. Um, couldn't you connect all the petals and then go around in a spiral? Christina, you might have missed that move. We were just working on it, but um, I say yes and no because what happens with this, unless, you know what, you'd have to build up the base better. I think for that to work more like you want, you need to build up the stamen part to be longer and have more girth so that you can twist around, but you also want it to taper. So you want it to taper down, and when you just wrap, all that bulk needs to go somewhere. So I think that you could work out an even better fabric um, for that to work well, but for me, it was a little bit difficult to control. Okay, so now filling that in, notice what a tighter bud essence that gives us, but we didn't have to add a full disc under there. We could use a partial disc, okay? So that is the quickie on kind of starting to form your little rosettes. I like to add at least two of the middle rows, and I had you cut 12 of these big ones. Don't be surprised if you find that you like two or even three rows of these larger petals on the outside to really start building up your flower and the rows can just get a little bit closer together and if you want you can on some of these you can also end up cutting off some of that but I used all of mine under here if you look at that I used the fullness of my petal and just let it build up you know layer after layer um, do you do a certain number of layers until it looks right who asked that cat I found that I liked it with more. So like on this flat, on this one, I went back and added another row tonight and I could even add another one if I wanted. So I did like it with um, more rows and that's why I gave you the number of petals to cut out that I did. That's why I said on the largest petals, cut 12 or more so that if 12 or more is so that, let's say you go five and six petals per row, um, and they get wider so they do go further, you might want to add one more. And the same with the middle. I really found that I liked um, a single small row um, or two and at least two of the medium and the large ones. At least that's for me. But you know what? Have fun. Make one. Make your fabric. Let your fabric come down to at least maybe 11 by 10 and then you'll have enough to build a complete one. And this is the little rosette that we started today and I'm going to keep, I'll probably finish mine tonight, at least the, um, the bud part, the flower part, and then post that 
in, uh, I'll post them all in the group as soon as I finish. So I'm not going to put ranunculus, I'm not going to put leaves on my ranunculus flowers, um, but let's look at it for the poppy. I didn't include um, a pattern for the leaves on the ranunculus. You can look those up if you want. Um, they remind me of carroty, you know, like little busy, kind of busy leaves. But on the poppy, we did include um, a leaf in the pattern, and it's just Marie's crude drawing. Um, so we did include a suggested leaf for the poppy. And I wet felted a fabric from the merino top in greens. And let me back up a little bit here uh, from the greens pack. And I think Holly showed you the greens pack. Um, <clears throat> And I just um, did a little bit of variegation so that I can, you know, maybe use them on some of my different flowers, use some of this light green under the, the base of a flower if I want to, or if I want to play with leaves. And I just did a, a gradient, if you will, and um, then just cut out your leaf pattern and then cut out your leaf. So I just pin the pattern to the felt. This felt has been ironed, so for those of you who don't know, you can, um, you can press your felt. You can iron it. This felt has been ironed also, so you can definitely iron it. Uh, don't be shy of that. And if you're worried about dulling any of your bling fibers with a too hot iron, well then just use a pressing cloth or iron from the back side. You can steam it or you can just dry press it. Either is fine. So go ahead and pin your uh, leaf pattern to your flower and then cut it out. And I'm going to show you what I did with mine. I have it somewhere. There's a leaf around here <laughs> somewhere. Oh God, you guys, how can I be alone in here? I have a leaf somewhere. Watch, watch the leaf and y'all talk amongst yourself. Oh, here it is, okay. So here's a suggestion for you. Here's mine, here's a suggestion for you. Um, it's just an idea. Now, you can make your leaf uh, two-sided if you want. You can make your leaf two-sided and um, or double thick and then glue them together um, if you want to. But in this case, what I did was I took, I just used our, um, it's our paddle wire, so it's a 32 gauge. It has a nice body to it. We sell it in silver, white, and black. I cut out my leaf. And then, and I'll show it to you just on this bit, cut out your leaf in the shape that you want. Put the wire in the middle and run it up almost the whole leaf and leave plenty down here so that you can mount it to your flower. And then run glue right down the center. And don't be surprised if you have to do this a couple of times. So glue this so that you have plenty of glue and then what you're going to do is squish it around the wire like this. Squish it. This is just an idea. Squish it and you're going to hold it or clamp it so it stays in place and then this is what you end up with. So one side has a little more of a ridge to it and it's the felt is thick so it shows but I think it's still fun and then there's the back side you can kind of see. So you can go back and add glue or you can use your glue gun I am so sloppy with a glue gun that I don't do well. Um, or you could run just a little bit of felt up there if you want, like a little piece of felt. But that's what I did is I just glued it around the wire um, so that I had a little bit of a ridge. And let's grab one of our poppies here. This, this poppy, I'm going to treat this stem, so let me get a little bit wider. I think I'm going to treat this stem, and this leaf doesn't match this poppy, but I'll use it to show you. Then you can position it on your flower wherever you want and wrap this wire down. Um, and you'll have a leaf that you can pose, and this wire is small enough that um, you can hide it under more MC1. So just wrap it around and then you can add more fiber down here. So obviously this leaf doesn't match this stem, but this is a way that you can go about it. 
and it's just a suggestion anyway. So you might double your felt, um, but if you don't want to double it, you might try something like that because no one's going to be looking at the underneath side anyway. And then you would just go back and cover this with more fiber. You could use Merino Top or you could use the MC1 um, and you can also wet felt it after or you could uh, treat it with like a 50-50 solution of fabric hardener or whatever whatever you use to like stiffen your fabric. I would I would suggest treating the stems of the flowers at least because this is what's going to get handled over time. So if you're going to treat it, um, you'll just do a 50-50 solution of water and your fabric hardener and you know tap it on there so that it forms a real nice skin and just kind of seals that up because you just want it to be able to be handled over time and not come apart and if you don't have our MC1 batting then that would make it more challenging um, let's answer a few of your questions and I think they're all good questions so thank you so much um, could you use the waste as bling on another wet felt? Um, so the waste could be used as an inclusion. You know, I, there's a video where we took some of our cut waste and I save most of my cut waste in little baggies, especially the thicker stuff, because what you can do, like if you wanna make a felt that has texture, like in clumps and lumps, you can stack those together or lay little pieces and felt stuff over it. So you can use it as inclusions in a wet felting project. Maybe like we said, even the core in a needle felting project. So that's an option. Patty Boy says, could you do nano felt with silk, a thin layer of merino silk to make them translucent? Um, you mean the petals, Patty? Could you make them translucent? I don't know. You know, I haven't tried that. I think they're not going to have much body if it's that paper thin, but then you could pull out your fabric hardener. So I don't know how you would do it exactly um, because you need to be able to needle felt them all together and have them stay together, but then also have shape. So give it a go and teach us, <laughs> okay? <laughs> give it a go and, and tell us what you have. Um, why do you iron it and does the iron make it go thinner? What happens usually after you wet felt is you notice that the fabric has some character to it. It might have a bit of a warp, it might have a bit of a crinkle, um, and what happens when you iron your felt is it's just going to smooth all of that out and give it more of a finished look. Give it a go if you've never ironed your wet felted pieces of any fiber, any fiber, coarse to fine, give it a steam press and see how different it looks. If you have wet felted a purse, steam press it and look how beautiful it looks compared to before. It really cleans it up. It really looks nice. So in the sense that does it make it thinner in a sense because it takes some of those warps or bubbles and sort of smooths them out a little bit, but it's not going to felt it or do pull any kind of magic on it, but it's going to look more finished and nice. Um, could you just needle felt a around the wire too? Sure, you can, but you're not going to be able to needle felt on the wire. So, um, you know, what you, another thing you could do is you could wrap this leaf around a bare stem, one that doesn't have any MC1 on it, and then wire all over that. But we didn't needle felt over this wire. I would just wet felt over it. There's no reason to try and needle felt something so skinny. It's, it's going to take a long time and it's not worth that much of the reward. It would be better just to wet felt this. I promise. It'd be pre it's going to be pretty easy. Um, could you wax down the stem? You know, Karen, I don't really use wax. I know that some people do. I know my friend Sarah does uh, and she has her own product of it, but I don't use wax. So if you like using wax, then have at it. Um, uh, what else? What else? Um, Great questions, y'all. Could you wet felt the stem instead of treating it? Yes, Rose. Uh, we talked about wet felting it last in last week. Um, so you can just wet felt it. A absolutely, you can just wet felt it. So I would say if you're gonna, you know, if you're not going to wet felt it, then go ahead and treat it. I should have mentioned that, but we talked about wet felting it last week. We did. 
uh, Jody Davis says, what is fabric hardener? Jody, uh, happiness, if you're watching right now, would you grab the Aileen's uh, fabric hardener? So fabric hardener is just like a liquid product that's like a stiffener. It's really used to, to, to stiffen fabric. We have uh, Aileen's fabric hardener here in the shop, and those who have watched my past doll making video, I talked about Paverpal, which is from Europe. Paverpal just seems to be really hard to get. We were importing it, and I think it's... Um, um, very difficult just to get across the pond. We started using Aileen's fabric hardener, which is used to sometimes, um, like especially, let's say for dolls as an example, if you put clothing on a like a clay doll, you could dip your fabric in this fabric stiffener and then it's going to forever hold that shape. Thank you so much. But it's also going to be very stiff. Um, so we'll get this on the website um, by tomorrow. It's Aileen's Fabric Stiffener. I used this in a project. Oh, our Night Owl Nightlight. If you want a fun wet felting project under our wet felting videos, check out the Night Owl Nightlight. I made a very thin project with uh, merino and silk, so it's a nano felt nightlight in the shape of a little owl. And um, we used this fabric hardener in a diluted solution over it so that it held its shape. So we made a very lightweight project so that the light, there wasn't too much wool for the project to shine through. And then we applied it to this and it gives it like a little shell, like a shell you could tap on and notice the difference. So um, it's just an option instead of wet felting. It's just an idea. Um, can we look at doing a vessel for our flowers? Alice, I do have vessels on the on my bucket list, not in the next two weeks, but I do have a vessel, um, a, a, I have a few vessel ideas for us. So I do wanna make a vessel, but I don't have it planned right away. Um, Christine asked about Powertex. I think Powertex is a fabric hardener also, so check it out. Aileen's is really affordable, y'all. It's not very expensive and you can get it. Um, and then one more question I see Marie Claire uh, says, can can you iron it needle felted butterflies? Would it make them all <laughs> let lay little fly away stay flat? Okay, so she's asking if you iron felt and you have a bunch of wispy stuff, will it make all that lay flat? Initially it will and you can add spray starch if you want, but you can also just trim, snip, snip, snip. If you've got fuzzies, clip them off make them go away. Um, you can steam press them, but once that fiber is dry, it's going to want to lift again. So you can trim off your fuzzies. It's totally okay to do that. Okay. Any final questions before we go, y'all? I want you to know it's so fun for me um, just to hang out with you for an hour and play. I love seeing what you make. We all do. We all love seeing what you make. And thank you all for your beautiful notes that you leave in our group all week long. So for those of you who aren't a member, oh, look, I have this microphone cord hanging here. That's nice. <laughs> Let me get rid of that. Um, for those of you who aren't a member of our group, it is uh, Living Felt Friends. Let me pull that up on Facebook. Join us there, share your projects, share your challenges, share your wins. We're there for all of it. So newbie questions, welcome. Advanced tips, welcome. There's no competition in the group. It's incredibly friendly. There's no marketing. There's no linking out. So it just becomes a great content, a great place where we can support each other. Um, whether it's your first project or your 100th and 11th project is totally fine with us and you can also follow us on Instagram right there so I hope you guys will check us out everything we use today remember that you can um, just download the supply list and the pattern the link is in the descriptions everything we're using is available in our shop livingfelt.com uh, we're shipping every day all over the world and um, yeah, so we're here to help you. And we also can take your questions by phone. You can call us Monday through Friday. Right now, we're not open Saturdays during this sort of lockdown period, but you can call us Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. It's easier to reach us like um, Tuesday through Friday because Mondays are so crazy, but you're welcome to call us with your questions as well. So I can't wait to see what you make. And today, we I do have prizes for you. I've just been delivered the magic hat. So I just want to say thank you all so much for felting with us. I'm going to draw two names from people who've been contributing to the conversation, asking questions, commenting, whatever magic you've shared. Thank you for that. And um, I'm going to show you what your prize choices are. And 
Um, if you didn't get your question answered or if you're watching the playback and you have something to contribute, please do comment down below and we will draw more names and giveaway prizes for the commenters on the YouTube video Yeah, next week. And we hope that if you had fun today, you'll give us a thumbs up, maybe give us a follow and subscribe. I'm just going to pull two names out of the hat right now and tell you who've won. So we have Elizabeth Pinoli. Congratulations, Elizabeth, and Jennifer Angelo. So these are our two winners from the live show today. Congratulations, gals. Here's what you get to choose. You get to choose a merino top color of your choice. We have a ton of merino top colors. It's got to be pushing 100 somewhere up there. So get to choose a merino top color of your choice and two, what we call them are bling fibers or our luster fibers. So if you go to our website under felting woolen fiber, you'll see the merino top there, the 19 micron, choose a color of that. And then under the luster fibers or wool neps, you can pick out two. So you might choose um, a tuss of silk and silk hankies or sorry silk waist and neps and what you can do is just contact us at the bottom of our web page you'll see the contact us link and use that little box there to submit I'm a winner and we will send you your prize so congratulations to Jennifer and Elizabeth and just thank you everyone so much for felting with us I can't wait to see your flowers I look forward to going home and finishing my little ranunculus that I started with you and I hope that your bouquet continues to grow lots of people are felting just amazing flowers that are way outside of these and it's been really fun to see so I hope that you continue your felting journey and thank you for spending part of it with us. We just appreciate you. Y'all be well. Have a great week and take care of yourselves. Okay. Bye.